Martin. It's an absolute pleasure to be with Teresa today. And uh, we're here in the studios where all these wonderful paintings take place. Um, Teresa, thank you very much indeed for inviting us down today. No problem. And uh, I have to say, this is just wonderful. Now, come on, what's yeah. the story behind the, behind the horses? Um, and uh, is this a passion, horses? Oh, yes, yeah. I've, I've always had horses and ridden since I was a little oh, girl. beautiful colourings, yeah. isn't it? This is a commission um, for a friend of mine, for her um, daughter. Um, it's her 21st birthday present. Well, somebody's going to be a very, very happy yes. 21st birthday, aren't they? So, come on, how long would it take us to get to, to get to this stage? Because I'm just sort of looking around the, the studios here. My goodness me, we have sketches everywhere. So, how, so how, do you, how do you start? I mean, basically, I just do a very rough sketch, like you see here, on a um, scrap of paper, which I then sort of cut around the horse and then pin it to a board that I'm going to work on, um, we like, like we have down here. <coughs> Um, and then I use graphite paper and sort of draw over the top of it with pen, hence the reason my sketch has biro all yeah, over it. Yeah. And that then transfers the drawing onto the board. And it just gives you the freedom to be able to position the picture exactly where you want it on the board. Whereas if you drew straight on the board, sometimes you might not, it might not end up perfectly where you wanted it. So it, it, if you do it on a paper first, it just gives you that freedom to move it around. And do you find that when you're doing these sketches, do you move them, move them around and relocate them? Oh, yeah, all the time. I mean, if you have two, two horses or two dogs on the same piece, it also gives you the freedom to just sort of see how they sit and where they sit best on the board. Beautiful. The, eye, the eyes are absolutely superb. So how far, how far are we into this painting? Ne nearly finished. Um, I've got some more work to do on the, the head collar here and sort of this nose, this sort of muzzle and things. It's, it's still got quite a bit of work to do, but not, not too far from finished. Shading's just beautiful. Okay, how many um, how many different paint brushes do you use? Um, for the majority of things, I use a number two pro art brush, which is this one. This is for all the detail of the hair and sort of any detail work really. Um, for the background, um, <laughs> look, you can just see all the individual brush strokes. I mean, they're just wonderful. That's what takes the time. Oh there, goodness me! You must have the patience of a saint. The bigger brushes come in for the background. Um, I tend to block it all in and get a very basic um, sort of um, the basic colours and shapes in yeah. and then let that dry for a week and then come back and then block the background in and it's sort of quite quick, sort of mm. this kind of um, way of painting. Once that again is sort of complete, I then get this brush here oh, yeah. and I blend it. Mm. So I go over it again and then this one then comes in to sort of really softly blend it so you get this lovely sort of smooth blended finish. So when you're working, do you have all the brushes uh, across the f across your fingers? So you're yes, um, yes, everywhere. And um, uh, yeah, and then again, once the background's dry, then it's back to this brush then for all the sort of fine detail, which gets built up in layers. How many layers? Oh, many. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'll work on it two or three days solid and then you have to let that layer of sort of hair dry and then come back and then once it's dry go in again over the top. Have, you, have you ever been in a situation whereby you've sort of, you, you've sort of nearly finished a layering and, you, and you've sort of stood back and looked at it and said, mm, not happy with that. Yeah. Is, is it a case of then restarting? Um, no, I mean, sometimes you sort of, you think, oh, I've, I've finished that, I'm going to finish that painting today and you sort of think, yes. And then when you've, you've done your day's work in it, you sort of look at it, you're still niggling feeling that you need to do another layer, which means another week's wait for it to dry. And, and then sort of, it, it can sometimes just be that two or three little hairs, little highlights, but yeah. it's another week before you can finish it. And then it has to dry again. It's amazing. Absolutely. I mean, it is, it is a beautiful, beautiful painting. Um, and then we've been, I've, I have to say, over the years, it's been a pleasure working and I've seen some super um, still lives. Uh, the, the horses, I have to say, I haven't seen you do too many of the horses. No, I do a lot of them as sort of um, pet portraits and yeah. things, but um, at the game fairs I tend to take the shooting and the yeah. still life type, type of paintings. But no, I do get asked to do a lot of horses. They're beautiful. How would you come with the backgrounds? I mean, you, you, the, the deep backgrounds have really sort of set the, the, the head of the horse off extremely well. 
Do you, is that something you just build up and you play with? You kind of have in my head sometimes the colours I'm going to use because th that, that's why I always paint the horse, block it in first. Is uh, I, When I go to put the background on, I'll pull colours that I've used within the horse out so it all looks sort of... Um, like unified yeah. um, so you can sort of see some of these colours and the blues and um, these sort of yellows and things that are in, in the horse's coat but I really don't know how a background's going to be until I actually start doing it Some it, I, it kind of you sit at the easel and you're just sort of ta dabbing colours here and you think yep that looks nice and you yeah, sort, starts, it sort of, it, it kind it of paints itself work, yeah. Yeah. yeah beautiful and, and when are you hoping to have this finished? Um, hopefully within the next week I'll have all the detail finished and then it's got to dry and then it'll be varnished and then so framed. So drying process, how long is that? Um, it would be a week for it to be touch dry but I like to sort of give it at least a month really if I can before I varnish it. it? So, it's, yeah. so it's a month on the drying process, yeah. then we then the varnishing. Yeah. And how many layers of varnish? Just the one, yeah, I usually just put the one on. And is that brushed? Yes, yeah, yeah, I brush that on. So again, sort of brush finished. Uh, then we leave it for how long before the, the framing? It, it, it can be dry within a day. Oh, right. Yeah, so then the, sort of the frame gets put on and then a couple of days and then, then it can go out. This is interesting. Okay, so we're talking about the frames now. Do yeah. you already have in mind what sort of style and what type of frame, or is it a case of once they're finished, you then marry the two up? And, oh, yeah, that works. I really. mean, sometimes you think, oh, I'm going to put it in that frame. You've got in your head the colours. And then when you've finished it, you, it, it doesn't suit it at all. Yeah. So I usually wait till the painting's finished, and you've, I've got sort of lots of different mouldings here that I can hold up against the painting and pick, and then I ring my framers to order the frame. Wonderful, I have to say. I'm looking forward to seeing that when it's, when it's finished framed. Lovely. So, Teresa, when, when you've actually got the board up and then you've started doing the pencil work, yeah. this leads us on to what, to what process next? Um, once I've um, transferred the drawing onto the board like we see here, then yeah. um, we go up to this one and you can see I've started to block it in. So I'm getting the, just the basic colours um, and the, the basic direction of the hair and things like that and the shapes in. Oh, right. And um, I just finish it very loosely like that and then it's put to one side then for a week before then I, um, the background goes in. And then once the background's in, um, then it's all the painstaking hours of the detail work, all the individual hairs and the so the detail work, so This is where we end up with this. I yes. Mean, this, is this, this is beautiful, isn't it? You can see it really comes together once you've got the background in and sort of you, you do start putting all these sort of highlights like you've got in the eye. And oh, sort that's of beautiful, isn't it? The, the sheens of the light and things on the ears. And again, on the backgrounds there, we've got sort of a, a, a quite a nice variation on the background, haven't we? Yeah, I tend to sort of, um, as I'm working, um, try and have light areas and dark areas, and that really gives the, the painting a 3D look. Yeah. It kind of pushes some parts um, further back and brings um, the, where you see he's quite light here. I've got the darker part of the background, and up here where the dark noses and things, it's lighter to highlight that. Detail on the nose is just, just tremendous, isn't it? And I also take lots of colours within the, the, um, the animal itself to put into the background. So you can see there's the yellows and the reds and there's sort of the blacks and the blues and things in there. Amazing. Okay, now this leads us on to an absolutely stunning piece of work. Uh, I, I, I don't think I've, I've seen you do one quite this size, but I mean... Oh, wonderful little touches. There's three of those on there. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. Yeah, you've got oh, a spot Oh, yeah, them. one, two... And there's a little chap down here as well. Oh, yes, yeah, so he is. Yeah. Oh, well spotted, yeah. Um, now, come on, what, what, what's behind this? Is this a commission? Um, no, it was a piece done for the, the CLA Game Fair um, to be my centrepiece. Um, and last summer, I was walking in the fields opposite the studio, um, and a farmer um, had just cut the, the corn in a sort of stubble field. And down along the bottom hedge, um, there was this piece of corn just left standing. Yeah, just a few, um, few ears there. So I photographed that because I thought it would be a lovely background because you have the real darkness of the hedge behind yeah. the lightness of the corn and it sort of looked really pretty. And, um, and then I sort of put the pheasants in, which I'd photographed previously, into the painting to make a piece. Cockbird's absolutely wonderful. There's just the work on through this section through here and the hen bird are just, just superb, aren't they? I enjoy I do like them. I keep chuckling at the mice. I do like the mice. They're scurrying around. 
No, I, I love painting feathers and things. It's, um, you, you build up many, many layers with that. Some, some of the paint, some of the feathers get painted in in white first, and then once that's dry, then it's lots and lots of layers of translucent glazes over the top to get the real bright zingy colours. I was going to say they are stunning colours, aren't they? The the farmer whose um, land it is came down to see the painting. Um, and he brought his dad down, and um, I got him in trouble because his, his dad said, why did you miss that line of corn? <laughs> what, what a lovely comment. Father, come and have a look at the, yeah. uh, the pheasants. Well, why did you miss the corn? No, that's, uh, it, it really is wonderful. There's an awful lot of work in this, isn't there? Yeah, it did take a long time. I, I mean, I was, I was painting ears of corn for weeks and weeks. Look at the detail in the eye, as you can just see the uh, reflection in the eye of the bird there. And again on the, on the cock bird, isn't it? Now this took a long time. Sort of um, you painted it all in and then just keep going back over it and over it, just highlighting it in, in certain places where the light catches. Just, there's just so many layers there, aren't there, and going through. The, the, sort of the shadow was as well. You're sort of getting the shadows of how each piece of grass and corn overlap one another. Beautiful, beautiful. Have you, ever have you taken on anything larger than this? Um, no, I think this is one of the biggest pieces I've done, especially with sort of a landscape. I've done a couple big four-foot square pieces, but they've, they've been more sort of um, montages of different animals. Yes. Um, this is the biggest background I've, I've done. This is just, it's just a, a, a wonderful scene during harvest, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, it's actually called um, the, co the Colours of Summer. Beautiful. This is an interesting one. Um, we just looked at the pheasants in the, in the summer, and um, now this one is one from the winter. <laughs> so she brings a, makes a chill. Yes, we've got the snow in this one instead of the sunshine. This is lovely. Come on, then. What, what, where, where were you? To, to Again, sort of locally, just sort of out walking, and um, I startled a pheasant, and he sort of flew up over the hedge and on away, and um, it sort of inspired me because, I, again, if you shoot, this is the scene you'll see. Yeah. The sort of pheasant coming over. Do you find a lot of these paintings that you know are, are, are taken from you know sort of real life, as it were? You're out sort of walking the dogs, or you're out sort yeah. of walking around, and something happens. You think. That's interesting. Then so you get back in the studio and then you start sketching. Yeah. And then that leads on to this. I mean, I have a rule that I stick to that I don't paint anything that I don't, I haven't been and experienced or sort of done myself. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm painting stalking scenes with deer and things, I make sure I've been out and done lots of deer stalking. And I go beating with my dad um, with, on the pheasant shoots and things and same fishing and sort of everything I paint. I always sort of, most all my paintings come from sort of actual experience of being out in the field. Yes, you can sort of nearly touch, he's nearly live, isn't he? You can just sort of imagine him, he's walked, you're walking along and he's just sort of flapped, called, and then they're up, aren't they? Very nice indeed. Nice bit of snow. Let's just hope we don't, uh, there's no snow coming just yes. at the moment. But uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Teresa, these are some absolutely wonderful sketches. Okay. Uh, now, when you're doing the sketches, is this from you know just scenes that you've seen, or or, or a bird or an animal, or, or do you have a sort of selection of photographs that you then start working with? Yeah, I mean they're they're from photographs. Yeah. Um, so you know, I just sit and sit. And it's just purely for my enjoyment. A lot of the sketching that I do. Yeah. They're absolutely lovely. And again, you've got a couple of different different. Uh, I always like to use a sepia-coloured pencil crayon when I sketch. I just like the softness it gives you. And, and, and when you're sat doing these, do, do, do these lead on to, to paintings, or do they just give you inspiration for sort of...? Yeah, I mean, so, sometimes they do. Um, it's, it's a very good <laughs> way of... Um, <laughs> I love the expression on the duck. It's, it's a very good way of learning sort of how your feathers lay and yeah. things without sort of having to go in and do um, a full painting of it. Yeah. Um, and sometimes um, I will come back and use these sketches for paintings, and, and sometimes it's just purely just to keep my hand in with sketching, and, and I enjoy doing it. Yeah, they're lovely. Okay, so this leads on to an, an, an amazing selection of um, photographs. And, and, and again, all, all your own sort of photographs, yeah, or do you get I mean, family and friends bring, bring them in? Yeah, I mean, it's ten years of sort of being out in the field and sort of ten years' worth of work to build up a library um, as big as the one I have. And uh, some of the photographs are my partner, Brian's, because he's obviously a photographer, so that helps. Who's the best, better of the two photographers? Oh, Brian, definitely. <laughs>
these are wonderful. And again, these, there's an amazing library of, uh, of photographs, and there are just thousands of them, aren't there? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, I, I will go out and just be out for a walk with the camera, and I'll, I'll see something that I think is a nice background, and I'll take hundreds and hundreds of photographs of it uh, as a, the whole background and then I'll sort of zoom in and just take detail of leaves and yeah. rocks and pebbles and, and sort of keep zooming in and out so I have like a whole scene. <laughs> what I think I've noticed is the amount of books that you have. Yes. And, 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 and what, uh, what's the, the reasoning behind the books? Well, being completely self-taught, I never went to art college and things. I've oh. had to learn my trade by really trial and error and looking at what other people do. So, yeah. I mean... There's a big selection of artists' um, work there from Caravaggio, um, sort of one of the great masters, through to sort of more contemporary um, artists like the great Roger McFowl, um, to um, Beatrix Potter. I mean, I'm a huge fan of her work. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's just looking, looking at their paintings, looking at their brush techniques, and, and just sort of then taking it back to my easel and trying it out and seeing how it works for me. Yeah. Teresa, you've got an awful lot of taxidermy here, and, yes. I'm, and I'm sure that's obviously to do with, you know, the still lifes that you do. Yeah. But the stag's head is just absolutely amazing, it's isn't beautiful, it? beautiful, isn't it? Come on, there must be a story behind it. Yeah, that. yes, there is. Um, that was the first um, stag that I shot in Scotland um, back in 2009. All right. Um, it's an estate that, I mean, meant a huge amount to me to be allowed to shoot at it, Gaik. Yeah. Um, because um, there's there's two great Victorian artists who were my sort of absolute heroes from sort of a very young age, yeah. Lancier and um, Thornburn. Oh right. And they both spent a huge amount of time at Gaik. A lot of um, Thornburn's paintings you can actually sort of see Gaik. Can you? You can some, see all the yeah, locations there. There's Sunrise Over Gaik, one of the famous paintings. Lost in the Glen, they oh, were all imagine. painted you, there. I can imagine you must have been in your element. Yeah, and Lancia, there's there's a, a mural on the wall that he painted. Oh yeah. Um, which is said to be Lancia's, and some people say it is, some people say it isn't. But I've had a look and I've studied a lot of his paintings. And what do you think? Yeah, it's Lancia. So the expert died. Yeah. That's it. It's Lancia. And, and I mean, they stayed at the lodge, and we were invited to stay at the lodge as guests as well. And it was we were there a whole week with sort of there was French and German um, stalkers over as well. So it was a fabulous experience. I notice in, in, in the studio that we've got uh, the small skulls and lots of yeah. feathers uh, and the, the, the partridges and all, and all those. The, the, does that play an important part in your sort of daily routine of uh, sort of inspiration behind a lot of these p paintings? Yeah, I mean, I'm fascinated by natural history anyway. I love it. So, I mean, I'm always out and about in the fields and things and, you know, picking up, I'll bring leaves back. Yes. Um, Feathers that I find, um, you know, I've got a set of boar teeth over there. Um, yes. We've um, our neighbours did some gardening and cut a hedge down, and then a nest fell out. Right. Um, so I sort of kept that. Um, but there's there's sort of loads of things in there. Super. Yeah. Trees of Rick Pines in Somerset. Now yeah. this is just off of Junction 24 on the on the M5, M5 isn't yeah. it? And it literally is just off yeah, the junction, isn't it? Yeah, literally. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people come here instead of the services. You know, if they fancy a cup of tea or yeah. want to stop, it's a good place. I'd say it's amazing. It's a fantastic project. Oh, it's, it's really lovely food, yeah. So, come on, how did you get involved with these people? Well, we live literally 10 minutes down the road, and um, we're regular customers here. Um, and because I do lots of still life and game and things, it just seemed a natural place for me to put my work. And you sort of look around and you, you see that they've, they've got a section of game, they sell pheasant and all the meats and things. So my kitchen scenes, like the one up there, just seem to fit perfectly in the here. The kitchen scenes, I, I mean, yeah. that's magnificent up there, isn't it? And that one's got all the species of game from this country. Beautiful. Now, how many pictures do you, how many pictures do you have in the establishment? Um, there's um, six here. Yeah, I've got six on display here and they also sell my greetings cards. The greetings cards are always very popular, and again, yes. uh, they're, they're all sketches from yourself, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they're all my paintings put onto the greetings cards, yeah. And I, I find a lot of people ask me where I sell them, yeah. and I tend to keep them just for the show, so it is actually a place where you can come and buy my greetings cards. They have the full range here. It's absolutely superb. I have to say, there's such an array of product, products. Are, are, are many of them local? Yes, they, they use a lot of um, local people for both meats and um, ice creams, everything. Most of the products in here, I mean, you can see there's a lot of local ciders. This is what sale. I like, a lot of the local ales through yeah. there. 
um, some wonderful hams in the, in the section here, and uh, and also the jams up on the uh, the other sections yeah. there. I mean, there's there's everything you you could want here, really. You know, with your grocery shop, and it's it's just so nice to sort of come to a. Um, to do your grocery shopping where everything's quality. Yes. It, it really is a lovely shop. It's absolutely wonderful, isn't it?